Cowherd, were you surprised by Cam's response to the female reporter? Yeah, I mean, I, he's not very mature. He hasn't been mature. Um, this is, I think, I've never seen a player in the NFL pandered to as much as Cam Newton. When he pouted after games, well, I mean, it happens. And then after the Super Bowl, well, he was really emotional. Remember this offseason when the coaching staff said, and I thought it was a harmless comment by the coaching staff at Carolina, you know, he was kind of shaken this year with all, and he went to Instagram and said, they're throwing shade. Like, are you into social media or are you a quarterback? Are you a grown up or are you a kid? This is a continuing pattern of a really talented guy who continues to be really immature. Yeah, there's easy mistakes he could avoid. Remember the, the he wouldn't wear a suit on then gotten benched for a play by Ron Rivera. The easy things he's stumbling over and causing controversy. L listen, I, I think Cam seemed a bit loopy there, uh, and, and maybe he's always a little bit loopy. I certainly think the comments were belittling. Uh, you don't call out someone like that, particularly in front of all their peers that way. For Cam not to recognize that speaks to the fact that he, he's an odd dude because anybody else could see this coming. I'm jeopardizing my relationship with sponsors. I'm putting myself in a needless controversy. Cam's a weird duck. To me, this has nothing to do with being grown up or immature or any of the things that Cam is normally criticized for because there are plenty of very successful men at the top of sports businesses, other businesses who are successful but still think this way. And to me, it was just another reminder of that and how easily that kind of came off of Cam's tongue tells me there's some truth, and he, he really believes in that. He doesn't think that women can be there in the locker room and could possibly know about routes. And I think it just brings up a really important issue that, just like racism, a lot of people don't think that racism is still an issue in this country because it doesn't look them in the face every day. A lot of people having, have a hard time thinking that sexism still exists in the country because it doesn't face them every day. And for a lot of men, that's the case, because they don't know what it feels like to be a woman being belittled just for doing her job. So I actually, I tried to look at it from the woman's perspective and from Cam's perspective. And the first time I was like, oh, I don't know if it's that offensive. And then I listened to it again. And if it was a man that asked the question, he would have just said, oh, I don't really like that question. But the fact that he went so far to say, oh, it's funny when a female talks about routes, then it crosses the line. Yeah, because it wasn't about routes. It was about, he said, I think it's funny, a, a, a female, female right. talks right. about. It's not I, about the past I routes. Just, I want to say this, too. I, I think, I, I don't like, actually, that Dannon pulled the sponsorship. Um, I don't think we should give Cam Newton a pass. I think he is deserving of all the criticism that he gets today. And I hope that we can, there are people who have done far worse things in this category who have not been called out. There was not this kind of outrage. They've made their brands on this, and there was no outrage for that. I don't think Cam deserves a pass, but for Dannon, I think this is a PR stunt because no one was going to look at this and say, oh, well, Dannon is still working with Cam Newton. That would never happen. No, I think he hurt his ability to represent Dan and women for, buy for yogurt. For sure, he, he <laughs> absolutely did. Yeah. I, I just hope that Cam looks at the situation, it's brought to light for him, that he grows from it, and that we can all not continue to give mostly guys and some women a pass for making comments like this because then it's when it becomes acceptable. Yeah, I, you know, I, I said this earlier. Guys have, like Cam, they have to start being more aware. You have to be present in the present moment. And when you see how casual he is, a lot of other players are casual. They don't understand how you have to be in the moment. You have to be a leader. You have to be a quarterback. You're not coming up there as this dude that's just coming off the couch saying, hey, I'm just going to respond and say how I want to say. No, you're absolutely the quarterback of the Carolina Panthers. So when you step up there, you have to carry that type of integrity up there. And so every question that's coming at you, you have to listen to the question and then maybe, dissect the maybe question. Maybe he is. He just doesn't have that mindset to know that that was inappropriate. I think well, he's or smart. sexist. No, no, no. But Chris, I think Ray's point, which I totally agree. Cam is not about business. No. Right. And and right. and when you're the face of a franchise, when they're paying you that kind of money, it's almost like being the mayor of a city. And so you have to be quarterbacky, as as Colin likes to say. And so he's 
a leader in that moment, can set a tone for the rest of that locker room. Here's a, a female reporter. Here's how you treat her. It can send a message to the rest of the right. team. I, I and and agree he's with blown you, it. But he doesn't have that tool no, set. No, I know. He's... And the, the bigger point that that just makes to me is how many people don't have that tool set. So let's point it out, have them learn from it, because what happens, it's just like how racism keeps growing. Mm -hmm. Kids are just raised that way. That's what they learn. Uh, and so uh, let's stop, let's call it out, not give people a pass. But I've talked to, I've literally talked to NFL general managers. I've talked to NBA general managers. They always say, if you want the franchise money, we want franchise maturity. Like, that's part of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, when you sit down with quarterbacks and they do wonderlick tests and they do interviews, they're probing and they're pushing and they're ticking you off because they want to know you're going to go to Philadelphia and be the quarterback and the media is going to clobber you. Can you handle it? Like, to me, Cam's issue is always not big, not strong. It's in these moments, he's just, he's immature. He, he doesn't understand. If they, had, if, they had, if they had lost this week, he doesn't answer that comment like He got cocky. It felt like he yeah. was just being That's cocky what I mean. and weird. That's what I mean when I'm saying you got, you got to be. Maybe not this week, but two weeks. You got to be. Pre if you're not, if guys aren't present with what they're doing when they speak, that, that's why it, when it, the, uh, almost five years before I stopped playing, one of the things I would always do was if I came from a heated game that I knew I was going to say something that's not right, I'm going to give myself time to think. I'm going to go take a shower. I'm going to get fully dressed. Then I'm going to come out and talk to you. Because we, we respond so quickly, and you saw how quickly he responded. He just, oh, oh, wow. And so he got caught in that moment, and, and I just truly believe he just wasn't aware. Day, day one with Cam Newton from the combine, global icon with Peter King, yeah. instant controversy. It, it was just a little off. He's never been about business. Yeah. And